Good afternoon, everyone. American Association for the Advancement of Science comes out with a report, weather-driven food shocks once in a 30-year event, down from a once in a 100-year event starting right now. Their focus was on the grain staples, corn, wheat, soy, and rice, but they featured corn prices for some reason. Predictive programming. Also taking a look at the great drought, which is going to return to California, just repeating a pattern of Several years of drought, followed by deluge of floods, back to the drought again. California statewide precipitation, oh no, lies again, caught red-handed. Taking a look back to the 1700s, which we're going to repeat the cycle, tropical fruit, rise in price. Walnuts, decimated, rise in price. Almonds, recovering this year in California, but next year going to rise in price. Taking a look at the great blizzard of 1888, how people froze to death 40 steps from their front door and near total crop losses of radishes in Korea. Here's your glimpse into some agricultural products that are gonna rise in price over the next two years. With a rather strong El Nino going to be followed immediately by an incredibly strong La Nina that will mimic something right from the 1970s. It's interesting how now food shock seems to be a topic that's discussed in the news. The American Association for the Advancement of Science comes out with a new report talking about weather-driven food shocks. They focus on the warm end, but also food shocks weather-driven can be cold as well. They featured the four different world grain staples, maize, soybeans, wheat, and rice. And they also go into the global breadbasket areas. Interestingly, they only put prices on the maize. So are they predictive programming and telling in the future that this is going to rise first or give some indication of what the price might reach over the next couple of years for you to decide that? Dr. Tim Ball does a really good wrap up here of the 1709 winter. If we have a repeating cycle that gets us down into anywhere close to that range tropical fruit any types of tropical fruit are going to skyrocket in price that would include oranges out of florida also look for a drive in walnut prices this year was exceptionally cold for short spells next year it's going to be colder what happens with the walnut trees when they freeze they actually explode the sap freezes from within destroying the cell structure which actually rips the tree back to the great blizzard of 1888 there was actually a book done on this called The Children's Blizzard because so many people froze to death. The day started out really warm. It even was melting snow, but by the end of the day, 100 mile an hour winds by sub-zero temperatures came blasting through. Those people who walked out in the morning with just normal coats and something that was more for springtime weather couldn't make it home. What's interesting though is the recap of the climate and how much snow was dumped in each area. Pretty much matched up with 2014 on this one. And that blizzard was so severe that people froze to death 40 steps from their home. They were so disoriented with 60, 70 mile an hour winds after the center of the storm passed that they couldn't even get back where they lived. They knew where they lived and they couldn't even get back to their homes. Now, if something like this happens again, you know, we have cars where we can hunker down, homes that are a little more well heated. But if the power grid goes down during something like this, we're back into the 1800s again. Climate Stations does a great job. Minnesota weather summary for the 1860s. I'm looking for repeating cycles. So, precipitation extremes. It seems to be a cycle of drought followed by extreme precipitation followed by drought and cold. So here we are in the drought and the dry. So last year was experiencing a drought and cold where nearly 90% of Minnesota was abnormally dry. They're recovering from the drought this year but their temperatures again, colder and drier than normal. When the La Nina kicks in, this will reverse and we'll go back into uh, heavy snowfalls, extreme blizzards again, loss of crops. Speaking of such, Korea had the coldest weather they'd had in 60 years across Jeju Island, wiping out nearly the entire radish crop. The farmers are just relegated to plow it back into the fields for nutrients for this replanting that's coming up. Single example here for you in front of your eyes. Okay, we'll take a look at the La Nina forecast again. Going to be as severe as the rebound from a Super Nina coming off 1972-73. Interestingly enough, 
looking at the climatology of San Francisco, California, look how much variance there is in hot years, cold years, far before we talked about global warming. If you go into the site, it'll roll back all the way into the 1920s, and you'll see that same flip-flop in temperatures occurring quite frequently. No CO2 involved, just natural changes in sun cycles. I did focus on the early 1970s because that's where we're going to repeat this uh, La Nina coming back up again. Cold, cold, cold after the heat. Record heat, bam, right into the record cold. Let's talk about the great drought in the 1860s that led to the breakdown in the cattle industry. In California, at this time, it's going to lead to a breakdown in the agricultural industry. Now let's keep the numbers straight here. 1862 to 1863, only 3.87 inches of rain fell across San Diego County. Also, it was a severe drought followed by extreme torrential rain. So we've seen extreme drought in California 2013-14, a little bit of 15, and then these extreme precipitation events over the last six months or so where I mean biblical proportion rains coming down repeating cycle. So San Diego for 2014-15 had nine inches. That's nearly three times what the lowest levels ever recorded were. And everybody's yapping on about driest year ever. It's not the driest year ever. If they have records going back to the 1860s with 3.87 inches, anything that's come across is not the driest ever. Where you see the colors is basically the agricultural industry area for almond production. The rains have recovered slightly in these areas, which means that this year the roots will soak up and produce some almonds. But if it does have anything to do with the repeating cycle, the real drought is starting to come in 2017. What you'd seen in the last two years of 2013-14 is a precursor for the real drought that's coming. So let's take a look at the numbers. 2011 and 12, San Diego had 8 inches of rain, which was 78% of normal. That's still far above the 3.87 from the 1860s. Jumping into the next couple of years, you can see six and a half inches. That's still over double. 2013-14, 5.06. That's still well above the 3.87 lowest recorded ever. And it's starting to recover again in 2014-15. Back up getting close to the regular average there. Now the interesting thing is, the repeating cycle from the 1860s talked about severe drought for two years, two and a half years, if you will, followed by torrential rains. And take a look what happened in California this year after the two years of drought. We get these torrential rains coming through San Diego in the exact same area. Roll through social media here, taking a look at the floods on the highways, neighborhoods, parking lots, apartment complexes. I absolutely see a repeating pattern and when it goes into this severe drought coming up that will last five years, agriculture in California going to be decimated. Almond prices five, six times the price what they'll be. Vegetable prices skyrocketing across the United States. The same occurrences will be happening in Mexico south of the border where they're also growing vegetables. So look for a drive in veggie prices as well as almonds coming up when the drought starts in the next year. Doing the research on the California precipitation, specifically focused on San Diego because I had the most info for that area, you'll find that the overall driest year was 1924 for California. But lo and behold, leave it to Noah to put the lowest, driest totals this last year. Now, how is that possible? That is pure manipulation, pure fraud, pure lies. And Noah, you should be called out on this. And whoever put this graph out should be fired. Also, John Casey, who wrote the book Dark Winter, has a new website out. I left the link here so you can take a look. There's some information on there about global cooling. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Within the next two years, all of these things that I've discussed in this video are going to drive in price. Almonds, walnuts, tropical fruit, rice, corn, oranges. Once you know what you're looking for, you can start to see the repeating patterns. Minnesota, same thing. It's going to snow more next year, just following on the pattern. California, after this year, when the La Nina kicks in, is going to get incredibly dry. It's just repeating a pattern. The solar cycles going through the waves we are now, bringing us back to a grand solar minimum. That's a repeating pattern. You can start to see and just match them up. Just takes a little bit of digging and research. 
All you have to do is match it. Please remember to pass this through your social media, get the message out. Food prices are going up and when food prices go up, social stability goes down. It's an inverse relationship to how much your food costs and how much you need to put out of your paycheck to eat every day compared to how much disposable income, relaxation and fun you can have. If you're worried about spending three quarters of your paycheck on food, people want answers and they want political change. We're trickling into the political change right now.